Welcome back to Discipleship Class. Hey, we're starting a brand new session. Session six. Praying without fear. Oh, oh do we need that right we now? We sure do. Oh, man. It is now about a week or so after the election. <laughs> we need pray. We need to pray. Yes. And we need to pray without fear. That's right. Um, this is going to be a very interesting lesson today. Um, it may seem long, but I think it might go pretty quick. What do you think, Tim? Somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah, it's going to go pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of verses. We have a lot of scripture today. Yes, this is awesome. Good stuff. Hey, how are you guys doing? You doing all right? Yeah. We're glad you're back with us. Yeah, yes. I want to go ahead and start us with a word of prayer, and we're going to go ahead and get started right into this lesson. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word that we're going to discuss today. We thank you for the opportunity to pray to you and pray without fear and just give you praise publicly and privately. Be with us in this lesson and have the Holy Spirit be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So once again, thank you for joining us. So as we transitioned out of Philippians, now we're coming into at least a three-part uh, series here on uh, praying. So why, why prayer is a central part of the Christian life. So we are in person, we were to go around the room and ask things like, what, what are you thankful for? So when we pray, what do we thank God for when we pray? Just think about that one for your second. Maybe, maybe you haven't gave thanks in a while, and that's okay, because sometimes we do tend to go through days without giving God thanks. But we know all good gifts come from God, so we should give thanks for that. So today in this session, session six, uh, we want to talk openly and candidly about the whole idea of community prayer and why so many of us find it difficult to do so. Now, I don't know how you are in your prayer life, but there are some out there who are prayer warriors and those who uh, may need a little help in their prayer life. And I would say I'm, I'm one of those. We can always do better when we pray to God. Yeah. So our first question to start us off what are some examples of times when we should pray silently? Not out loud, but silently. Now you might think, well, maybe if I'm in a public setting or schools, you know, they don't really like that kind of stuff anymore. Or maybe you're sitting in a lunchroom at your job, whatever the case may be. But we have to think that there are probably times that we do pray silently. Sometimes we pray for those who are right next to us, and we don't want them to know that we're praying for them. But God does want to work a, a mighty work through that. Yeah. So uh, we're going to look at some scripture to kind of see why we do it this way. And Aaron's going to start off in the book of Matthew. Yeah, and, and to dovetail on what Tim was saying, um, a lot of people, when they get asked to pray, say, in a group setting, mm -hmm. they get kind of nervous, get kind of freaked out. Um, they don't know what to say, and they are afraid what people are going to judge them on how they pray. You know, yeah. and, as far as that, because you know, you see these people um, that pray out loud really well, and they're very fluent and eloquent yeah. on eloquent. how they pray. Um, and that can be kind of intimidating to yes. some people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to try to see if we can help you with that today. And then this lesson kind of helps out with that. So let's start with the first verse, Matthew six. 5 through 6. And when you pray, you must not pray or must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door. Pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you mm. oh that's a powerful verse i like that verse really yeah, yeah. It, you ever heard of the uh of a prayer closet this is kind of like the idea of that where you go into your own space yeah alone to pray do you guys have that place in your place in your home i do actually a, a good uh if y'all ever seen the movie war room it really, it really brings that to life too, of having a, a dedicated time to prayer in a place just between you and God. Yep. So we're going to talk about the first underlying point 
of this lesson. Number one, in the uh, phrases like this, when we are tempted to pray only to impress others with the impress others being underlined. Mm. Okay. Why should we pray silently in this case? Well, because the motive of praying out loud is to do what? Impress others. Mm. If you pray silently, that takes that temptation out of the way. You don't, sure. you don't want um, you know, the need to impress others. You know, that's, that's not necessarily a good thing. That's what the verse that Jesus was talking about mm -hmm. you know, beforehand. Let's talk about the next question. Do you sometimes find that you are concerned with what others think when you pray? That's a big question. There's a lot of people who think that way. Yeah. So, here you go. How about this? If you are trying to impress others or people, don't pray. Mm. Okay? You're not talking to God anyway when you're trying to impress others. <laughs> I mean, think about it. That's true. You're talking to those around you. It's a making me look good issue versus building your relationship with God issue. The Father does not respect that form of communication. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, some, that's some craziness right there. Now God knows our intentions. Yeah. Well, let's continue. Let's go to Matthew 26, verse 36. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. Well, you, you find that a lot, actually, in the Gospels. Yeah, he does. He, when he sent the disciples over the Sea of Galilee, he went up to the mountain and prayed. To pray. And then, uh, in the night, that's where they had the storm and they saw Jesus walking on water. Jesus is walking on the water after he was praying in the mountains by himself. And that was after he just figured out that John the Baptist was beheaded. That, that's true. That's very good. So let's talk about the second point underneath this scripture we just discussed. When we are praying personal and intimate prayers, and we're talking about praying silently, right? When we are praying personal, intimate prayers. Yes. So why should we pray silently in this case? You know, sometimes... Shocker, we need to talk to God alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's not always has to be in front of people. In fact, the Father probably prefers a lot of the time for you to have your personal relationship with Him with no one else around. That's right. The nature of what we want to talk about and the emotions involved are not appropriate for others, for the ears of others to hear. That's true. No, it's none of their business. Really. Jesus specifically separated himself from the others, as Tim said multiple times. As he met with the Father regarding, in this, in this verse, Matthew 26, 36, the upcoming crucifixion. Mm -hmm. So, wow. I mean, as far as like talking about praying in silent or, or silently praying, we want to, you know, these two points, remember that if we're trying to impress others about the way how, how we pray, um, yeah, don't do it. Or when you need to talk to God about personal private matters, yeah. Yeah. That's a silent prayer. Specifically in your own set, you know, separate place, you know, in your prayer closet. Mm -hmm. So for any of you that, that have uh, multiple children, you can look at it this way, though you love all of them equally, Sometimes you desire that specific time with each individual child. That's what God wants from us. He loves us all equally, but sometimes He desires that individual time. But as we continue, now we're going to focus on 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 16 through 17. This is Paul writing, Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying. For you may be given thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. Mm. Now these are Paul's exact words here. 
So when we look at this, why we pray in silent, point number three, when praying out loud does not build up the church. Well, I got a question, Tim, all right, because I've been asked about this question before, and what does, what does it mean to build up the church? Because mm. I, I, I like to know, you know, what you think about that. Building up the church? Yep. Well, I would say, you know, with, with life always coming against us, I would say building up like uh, edifying or, or lifting up, yep. uh, strengthening. Uh, we always want to help the other person boost in their spirit. Encouragement? Encouragement, yes. That's a good way to put it. Okay. To encourage, to exhort, to edify. I would say that's part of the building up of the church. Teaching as well. Teaching, yes. Yeah. I don't know how I left that one out. <laughs> I don't know. That is a good one. Yeah. It's not like we teach often. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, sorry. No, 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 did you have something to add to that? Oh no, that's that's okay. that's what I'm looking for. I mean, it's it's perfect when you're building up the church. We're not necessarily talking about numbers here. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, I, I see where you're coming from now. We're not talking about numbers. We're talking about the spiritual health. We're yeah. building, encouraging, as Tim said, and those all those things, and we just want to, you know have you guys think about what we're talking about when we're talking about building up the church? Yeah, because you've heard some, some people might say a healthier church is not a thousand members who are not seeking God, but could be ten strong members who are always seeking God. Those ten can be stronger than a thousand. Yeah. So yes, it's not about the butts in the seat, but the prayers that are being lifted up, the church being built up. Sorry, can I say that on the video? <laughs> I think so. Okay. PG-13. Yeah. Uh, so the question here, based on Paul's writing, why should we pray silently in this case? So if my praying out loud does not benefit those around me, what is the point of praying out loud? In this case, Paul is addressing uh, praying in tongues and how if there is no interpreter, the congregation does not benefit at all. In fact, it would become a hindrance to effective corporate worship should it be practiced that way. Mm. That, and put that way, it actually makes sense. Yeah, it's true. So my next question, what are some examples of times when our prayers do not build up the church? Ooh, that's... <laughs> that probably happens more often than we think. And we'll listen to what Tim is going to say on this one because there, it's a lot. You'll hear it a lot <laughs> and you're going to be like, this doesn't make sense. No. Mm. no. So when we look at this question, we might be guilty of this if we are using prayer as news updates or as a spiritual form of gossip. Wow. Oh, yeah, you put it that way. And sometimes people are, are really just using prayer as a teaching time to benefit of the listeners as opposed to really talking with God. I'm sorry. I... <laughs> so some, some would say um, those who are deeper in their walk, will sometimes use that as an opportunity to use Christian jargon to impress other people around them. When you're using big words or, yeah, when you are updating someone of someone else's business, that's not really meant to edify the church there. It's not building up the church. In fact, it's almost like you're almost building up your own ego. But I don't think a lot of the people around you would look at it as you building up your ego. Um, but when we are talking to others and not to God, we are not praying. That's true. So when we go to this time, even if it is a silent prayer, your focus is between you and God. So keep that in mind. Let's go to the next verse, Matthew 6, 7 through 8. And when you pray, do not keep up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. Wow. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you even ask Him. So, praying silently is also for number four, when you have nothing to say. Mm. Well, that's interesting, because you think that praying is all about saying stuff. Yeah. You know, does God hear my prayers when I say nothing? Well... Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> and he, so, he knows what you're going to ask before you even ask it. That's true. Before it's even a thought in your mind. That's true. Yeah. I, 
yeah, that's that's pretty cool. You know, when you know that. So when even when we are just just praying and thinking about the Father and thinking about Jesus, we don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't even know what to ask for. We know we want to ask for, you know, we want to ask, but we just maybe don't know how to say it. God knows. Yeah. But it's, it's just as much about being in His presence in that time. Yeah. So if you have nothing to say, right, and, and the question is, why should we pray silently in this case? Okay. If you have nothing to say, don't try to make something up to impress God and others. Are you, are you impressing God? Do you think you're going to impress God by that? I don't think so. <laughs> don't try to pray these long, elaborate prayers that just go on and on. Um, yeah. You know, how about you just pray simple, heartfelt prayers? Okay. Long, eloquent prayers have more of a tendency to make people's minds wander and not focus on the content of the prayer. Now, that's true. That's very true. Have, have you ever been around someone who literally prayed for 25 minutes? In your mind, you're already thinking next week's schedule at work and whatever else. I mean, that's true. I mean, you're, you know, when, and we're talking about praying, you know, this is a reason to pray silently, but when a person is talking a long, long prayer um, in a whole group setting, and I'm, yeah, you know, like what Tim says, like a 20, 25, yeah, that's like a sermon in prayer form. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that, it doesn't, it doesn't really work, and a lot of people will kind of get, well, distracted. And, uh, it's, that's a very hard one. So, now, the next one that we're going to do. Okay, we talked about praying silently and some reasons why we should. The next one is, what are some reasons to pray out loud? Okay, we have to think about this because there's times when we are we're going to do it. And we have to be, as the title of this session is, Pray Without Fear, and that includes praying out loud yeah so when we're looking at praying out loud we're going to look at first uh, the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 14 and it reads all these things with one accord were devoting themselves uh, to prayer together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers so you notice how in there it says of one accord and they're devoting themselves to prayer so that brings us to our first point here, as we are praying out loud, our reason why we pray out loud is praying together was mold, uh, modeled by Christ and the early church. So we can almost see this as a corporate act of worship. So as the other one was more of an individual approach, now this one is as, as a group, collectively. So when we look at this here as the beginning of the church, why did the church pray this way? Well, family members share issues that they are dealing with. Maybe you do that during with your family. I know for my family, we usually get everything out when we're eating dinner. That's how we conclude our days. <laughs> it could be like venting, but we do get uh, prayer in there as well. But there is a healthy desire to be a part of a community where each shares one another's lives, bringing concerns before our Father in Heaven. So the early church found praying together to be a powerful and bonding experience. The simple fact that Jesus prayed with his disciples and the early church prayed with one another conveys for us as a community uh, the value of corporate prayer. Now that's true. That's, that's, that really is good. You know, when you have people praying over you or praying over people, yeah. um, that has a lot of benefit. It does, it does. And I'm, I'm, again, I know we talked a second ago about someone who prays 25 minutes. Now, if you actually come and you allow the Spirit to move you to pray that long, then there's nothing wrong with that. As long as it doesn't incorporate elements of the other things, that we're not making it a selfish prayer, but instead interceding for others. And I'll go on and, and dovetail on that by saying that when we're talking about, like, as the Gentiles do, the Gentiles, when they're, you know, 
in their pagan beliefs back in those days, they would pray endless chants over and over and over again of, of really no value. Yeah. You know, God doesn't want to hear the same thing over and over again in the sense of, you know, um, I don't know, some type of chant. Okay. He wants us to think and talk to him. Mm -hmm. Like, actually just talk. That's why we, as a Christians, have a relationship. Mm -hmm. Not just, you know, vain battle. Yes. And I often tell people a rule of thumb is that we can learn to pray the things that Jesus would pray for. Mm -hmm. And I'll put that somewhere here on the screen to show you a few uh, parts here in the Gospels that show you how Jesus prayed. But now we're going to turn our attention to Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 through 20. And this is a good passage. It says, Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Verse 20, For where two or three are gathered in my name, then I am among them. So, some of the reasons we pray out loud, number two, praying together unites us with the family and purposes of Christ. Now, I could go on a rabbit trail and say this is a, one of the top misused verses in the Bible. That's true. But well, we're not going to go down that rail. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that too. I was like, hmm. But this, when you, when you actually put it in context, like I just said, that praying together unites us with the purposes of Christ, now that makes sense contextually. Yeah, that's true. So if we all pray silently, how might that hinder the unity of the church? So imagine coming together as a, as a church and everyone prays in silence. Now, I don't see how that could be a big thing, but here's, here's how it can hinder the unity of the church. Obviously, Christ is always with us. So the idea that it has to be two or more Christians that Christ is with us, that's false. Christ is always with us. That's true. When we come together to pray, it says we are of one mind and purpose. In fact, we see a lot of that in Paul's uh, theology. So when the church is focused on Christ and what he wants to accomplish in this world, our prayers become very powerful as we are now in sync with Christ and his family. Wow. That makes sense. Ima imagine being in sync with Christ and God's will. I think that's a very good thing to be synced with. <laughs> yes. So when Christ says that he is with us, he is saying that his spirit is in agreement with his church and will put their united prayer request into action. Hmm. Wow. Nice. I like, I like how that's broken down. I do. <laughs> that's true. All right, let's talk about the next one. 1 Corinthians 14, 6 through 17. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen? Didn't you just do this one? It's no? a, they're using it again. They're using it again. I was like, it sounds familiar. <laughs> I'm like, that's true. Wow. I was like, man, I thought I was going to have another, you know. What's it called? Uh, epiphany? An epiphany. It's just like, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I just, it seems like I don't want to be like doing on the wrong page thing again. I've done that before. I've done that before. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let me restart. Let's bear, go. bear with us. The election yeah. just happened. <laughs> all right. First Corinthians 14, 16 through 17. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you're saying? Mm. Okay. For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. All right. Mm -hmm. Point number three in this part where when it's good to pray out loud. Praying together edifies and builds up the kingdom of God. And we kind of already discussed what edifying building up is yep. okay encouraging so would that make sense that in the next question how does praying out loud build up the church how that could strengthen the church you know make it stronger get up people one mind edifying encouraging you know when somebody prays for you that's an encouragement it is that really is an encouragement yeah and the Holy Spirit takes advantage of that. I'll, I'll just give one example real quick. I remember being somewhere and there was a, a large group of people there and the person leading this time 
said, raise your hand if you know without a doubt for a fact that someone or some uh, people are praying for you. And I remember 99% of those people raised their hand. Mm -hmm. But as I looked around, there were a few that did not have their hand raised. So when you put it in that perspective, that shows you how encouraging it is knowing that people are praying for you, for you at all times. Because mm -hmm. we know Jesus intercedes for us. But how much as a church family are we praying for others? And that's part of the Philippians talk of being united. United, yeah. Mm. So, next question. How does it make you feel when you hear somebody else take your name before the throne of God? Mm. I think we were just talking about that, eh? You're that, like, that makes it sound sweeter, though. Yeah, it does. Make it before the throne of God. Because we are going before the throne of God. Mm -hmm. The throne, of, you know, Christ is our intercessory intercessor that we can come before the throne of That's grace. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that means that makes me feel good. <laughs> it makes me feel <laughs> good. Let's go to the next verse. James 5, 14 through 15. All right. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Mm. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And he, it, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Wow. All right. Point number four for praying out loud. Praying together affects change. Yeah. Why is praying together part of the key of effective prayer? That's a good question. Okay, because sometimes God chooses not to answer prayer until his whole family is united, unified and passionate about the same issue. Hmm. Hmm. It's interesting. That's one of those where you pray something and God's like, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. God does not want us dealing with life on our own apart from his family. Mm. Now, this is part of the one mind church family. Yep. God has designed the church in such a way that we need each other and need to be praying together. Perhaps many times prayers are not answered simply because the church did not come together to pray for that issue. That is harsh. That is harsh. But it's true. It's, it, no, no, it's true. Absolutely. But... You know, some people would be like, oh, that's kind of harsh. So as we look at these, as we talked about praying out loud, now think about yourself, and I'll ask this question, what are some barriers to praying out loud? Now there might be some that automatically come to mind, but we're going to give you a few here. So number one, we see that there is a fear of inadequacy. Say, try saying that word five times fast. Inadequacy. So that's, I believe this ultimately comes from the enemy. He wants to tell us, who are you to pray? Who are you to pray for someone else? Who are you to speak to God when you're such a sinner? You're such a dirty, rotten person. Why would God want to hear from you? And I think this can hinder us. So what, what is the person in the Bible that felt inadequate? be representing God in prayer or in anything. Moses. Oh yes. Good, very good point. Moses even said to God that I am not a good speaker. Not a good public speaker. Mm. God used him anyway. And he has at least five books in the Bible written by him. Yeah. And when Isaiah said, woe is me, mm. that I might have unclean lips. I mean, <laughs> you see that. But the enemy wants to remind us of these things. So my question about this one, the fear of inadequacy, what are some fears of inadequacy that might come up when praying out loud? So we'll list a few here on the screen for you. One fear is I don't talk very well in front of people. I think that's the majority of people. Yep. And actually, um, the fear of speaking in front of people is one of the top fears, I think, around the world. Uh, number two, I might stumble over my words. Well, as he mentioned Moses, Moses actually pleaded with God, saying that he had a basically a speech impediment. Yep. But we have to rely on God that he's going to help us with that. Number three, I might start praying at the same time that someone else starts praying. Wow. <laughs> 
So there's the, the, the issue of, um, I'm sorry, you go ahead, or I'm sorry, you go ahead. Yeah. And sometimes that can even stop the momentum of a prayer. That's true. And number four, I might get lost in my prayer and not know what to say. Mm-hmm. I've heard of all of these. Yes. There's even a, a Christian song out there, and I, I really love it. It says, when you don't know what else to say, just say Jesus. Because there's so much power in His name. That's true. But yes, those are some hindrances there. Um, what A question here. What might God have to say regarding each of these reasons that I just listed? Well, we can go through and we can see some of these excuses, but we must know that God's given us, if we're a believer in Christ, we have the Holy Spirit, and we know the Spirit can help us in prayer. In fact, that, that's one of His, I don't want to say duties, but that's one of His, his uh, gifts or His talents to help us do that. So what we really want to emphasize here is that you are not inadequate. You know how to talk to God. And, and when we don't know what to say, like I said, rely on the Holy Spirit and He'll give us the words to speak. Mm-hmm. So if you never talk in a group, it is merely because you have not yet discovered how loved and valuable you are to God. Hmm. He holds you in a higher esteem than you hold yourself. And I, I believe that 100%. And His desire is that you see yourself just as He sees you. You know, Tim, that first sentence that you just said, that's a... That's a Seems like a pretty harsh sentence. And that's not saying that you have to rush out from watching this video and, and gather a group of people and say, let me lead this prayer. That's, right. not, that's not what we're saying. No. But we got to look at the topic today is praying without fear. Yes. You know, and, and again, sometimes it, it's there, but we have to learn to, because I'll I tell you, it took me years before I'd even raise my hand in the church, let alone start a prayer right. or even be a part of a prayer. And I know my wife used to jab at me all the time. Hey, you know, you got to do this. You're, you're a man of God. I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll get there one day. <laughs> but. <laughs> Point number two. The fear of what others will think. There you go. I'm sure you struggle with that because I know I have. Yeah, me too. Yeah. What types of thoughts might people believe others are thinking about them? Mm. Okay. Super spiritual. The way, you know, the way you're, you know, praying makes them think that you are, I guess, or incompetent. Or, incompetent. You know, I can't believe this person is praying such a basic prayer. That is wrong for the other person to say. It is. So when, what, you know, next question is, what might God have to say regarding each of these reasons? Okay. Well, let's... Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians 1 verse 10. Okay. For I am, or am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Okay. Or am I, or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Hmm. If you're trying to impress others, then you're not praying to God. I think we've said this before. Double emphasis. Yes. So the goal in prayer is not to make others think highly of you, right? But for you to simply come to God in humility and share what is on your heart publicly. Amen to that. If someone else stumbles in their prayer or forgets what, where they're, what are they going to say, do you think less of that person? Do you? Mm. Because you shouldn't. Mm. If anyone prays a simple but heartfelt prayer, do you think less of them? No, that was a little short. (laughs) No. Do you think less of anyone when they try to sincerely pray and don't do it perfectly? You know, that's, you know, that's almost, that almost gets frustrating because people feel bad then and they don't want to do it anymore. And that's not, that's not the point. God doesn't want. And if, and if you're ever part of a group or you do pass around chances to pray, don't ever make people feel belittled because they didn't share in that prayer time. Right. Maybe they use that opportunity to silently pray. Right. So please don't belittle other people. Hey, if someone passes on a, on a public prayer, do not judge them. No. Okay. That's hey, that's, that's cool. That's great. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really, 
because they are praying, they are there. They're in the group praying with everybody. If they don't pray, like, hey, that's okay, don't that's judge okay. them. That's right. But if they decide to go out in to pray publicly about it, don't judge them on how they do it. Yeah, because in, in a way we're almost saying, God, you're you're so small that you actually have to hear audibly hear our voice right. only to hear our prayers. That's that's crazy thought. Yes. So, how about this? Don't allow a lie to prevent you from building the community of God. Okay? The lie is holding you back from experiencing the community that God desires for you. Mm -hmm. hmm. If others are evaluating you, they're not focusing on God. That's right. They're, they're just not. Then they are not praying either. Right? They're not praying. Because right, they're focusing on you. They have their own issues. Really, they do. Don't let them control how, where your walk is spiritually. Because that's... Because, you know, we, Tim and I have always said, how is your walk? How is your walk? Because that's, that's important. That's important. So our third one here is a distracted mind. A distracted mind. Have you ever been distracted before? You felt or you seen a need, you heard a need, and you want to go to immediate prayer, but then you find yourself easily distracted. Huh? <laughs> what did you say? What? So our question here is how might getting distracted keep us from praying out loud? Well, sometimes it's hard to focus when others are praying and our own mind begins to wander. So when this happens, we get out of the conversation and you usually don't feel uh, too motivated to jump back in. You will often find this in the case if someone prays a really long prayer. You know, that's, I get, that happens to me. <laughs> it, I, does, it happens to me. I, I get distracted. I do. But you imagine praying the word of the day, as you mentioned our last one, is pithily. Pithily. Short and concise prayers. You do it like that, you keep people in with their, and as we mentioned earlier, we, we want people to be of one mind, to be unified. Mm. So if everyone is, is unified in the prayer, imagine how much more effective that is. Yeah. And, and God is wanting to act, as long as it's according to His will, yes. in, in that case. So what are some helpful hints you've discovered to stay focused when others are praying? Well, I'll go through a couple here. Uh, one, uh, to listen to what the other person is praying and pray the same request, but in your own words. So when someone starts a prayer chain, like some, some churches do, hey, this person just went through this, this issue. Can we get people to pray about this? We can take what was already prayed and we can turn it into our own words. That way God sees our spirit is in agreement to lift us up. We are to bring these petitions to God. So, too, we can affirm the other person is saying, like phrases like, yes, God, amen, Lord, I agree with you, thank you, Lord, etc. Yeah. So anything that helps you stay part of the conversation. And number two, if you really look at it this way, it actually helps the person who is praying. It builds them up. That's true. It, it keeps them concentrated. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes if you're not, if you don't want to, you know, pray out loud, like, in, like leading or taking partake in this prayer chain as far as like praying a, a prayer you know it actually helps and builds up not just the person that's praying when you say that you know lord i agree with you amen it actually helps you yes because when you say that out loud right listen when you say that out loud and people hear you and they're lifted up that will soon give you that encouragement to then go out and pray yes exactly with the group exactly so the last one here and we want to emphasize this don't pray long prayers when in a group setting because we know time is our most precious commodity that god gives us so we shouldn't have be the only individual that takes up 25 minutes of prayer when the whole prayer time is 30 minutes right. though we shouldn't really put a cap on prayer for the holy spirit right right but we want to be respectful of other people's time including god's so we must pray for one or two things and let the others jump into the conversation. Yep. So, and I've done this at the beginning of my walk. When I know I'm going into a prayer session, mm -hmm. I have a long list, a bullet point list. God, I want to pray for my neighbor. I want to pray for my job. I want to pray for my car to not break down. I want to pray for my parents' trip next month. I want to pray. And you can see how this list can keep going on. 
And that's okay to pray for these things, but in group settings like this, it's not the time to actually sometimes air out your dirty laundry oh. in your prayer list. This is not a time for spiritual gossip. No, it's not. So learn to prioritize, lift up the things that you would think that these other Christians around you would actually agree on and pray in their own words. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Yeah. Wow, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. So how about another good one? Mm. Number four, spiritual oppression. Wow, that is yeah. a good one. So how might spiritual oppression keep us from praying out loud? Okay. Guilt. You know, here's even an, another harder one for people to get. Mm. Evil spirits. Wait, those exist? What? <laughs> yeah. I'm distracted. What? They do. And let's talk about guilt first, because a lot of people have that. If we know we have unconfessed sins in, your in our lives, that creates a barrier between us and God, right? Our, what, what would you say, our relationship is kind of at, what would you say, kind of at a standstill, mm -hmm. right? Um, it is difficult to talk with someone when you know you have a tension in the relationship, okay? The key here is to not stop talking. It's a good key. Yeah. Don't stop talking. But to make things right before you go any further in that prayer. Mm. Get right with him. Yes. That would be good. Yeah. That would be really good. Evil spirits. All right. It is possible for evil spirits to oppress your mind during times of prayer. Yes. Yes. Some have found that when they go to prayer, their mind simply goes blank and they're unable to pray. This may also occur when listening to someone else pray. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when someone starts to pray, a strong fear or insecurity arises and nothing comes out. I've had that happen before. <laughs> Sometimes this is expressed through drowsiness, whether the person, whenever the person begins to pray. To pray. Wow, okay. <laughs> now, if you haven't slept for a day and you start praying, you start getting drowsy. This might be tired, <laughs> but when there's times when you when there's something going on that that does happen, well, it may be this. Okay, people have also struggled with spiritual oppression when trying to read the Bible. Uh, yes, and the pages go blank, or words get muddled when listening to messages. Mm. Huh. That's true. Wow. But you know that now we're just touching the surface on this, and man. I know y'all, you know, you guys got to have some questions like going on, or can it be this, can it be that? We'll get to that. We'll get to that in discipleship. We're just not going to kind of dig that deep on this one. Yeah. All right. Final little point on this spiritual oppression thing. There can be a spiritual oppression in your life to prevent you from moving forward in your relationship with God. Now that's true. If this is constantly the case, then we recommend you speak with the pastor about this issue. Yeah. So, so when we look at this, one of the goals of this phase that we're in now, phase two of four, is to turn our church or even all believers into praying, a praying church or a praying, a praying group. Yes. Prayer is our direct communication with God. We shouldn't allow that to be the, the last part of our Christian walk. So uh, this will only happen when we learn how we can conquer our insecurities and take community prayer seriously. There is a time for joking, but there's also a time for serious uh, worship with God. God is holy. He desires our un undivided attention. So over the next few weeks, we'll ask um, our group and you guys to uh, try try to spend more time in, in prayer with God. You know, maybe start off with maybe a few minutes, maybe five minutes. And then you can see as you learn, because we are talking about spiritual disciplines, maybe learn to increase that time. And if you can find yourself praying for an hour, undivided, in a day, throughout your day, you can start to see how how much God is growing your spirit, if you can give that much time to God. So... So you're in this group and you're in this video group with us. 
because you have committed to Jesus to grow as a disciple and will be all that he has created you to be. So corporate prayer, as we mentioned earlier, is a foundational building stone of growing in maturity and building an effective church that is led by the Holy Spirit. So though you may not be a part of FCC here, First Christian Church of Cape Coral, you are part of the church collectively. That's what a capital C. You are part of the one body that we are in Christ. Mm. That's awesome. That's a lot of stuff we just discussed. A lot, yeah. Yeah. And go over this video a couple of times to go back over to try to get it because we taught a lot of, actually a lot of points and a lot of, man, we just, how many sermons did we just kind of touch on? That? <laughs> You're at least six. At least think. six. I mean, those these are like major points of like people have done sermons on. Yeah. And uh, but they can help us grow. Mm -hmm. And that's good. so we're done with this part of this session. Now we're going into the devotional reading for this week. It's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. We're past Philippians, right? We kind of got the you know ball rolling with that. Hopefully, you're working on your doing it during the week. Mm -hmm. So this time we're gonna do something a little bit different, okay? This week we're gonna focus on prayers of the Bible, since we're talking about prayer, okay? This week is about prayers of the Bible that convey intense emotion. Wow. You mean the Bible conveys intense emotion? <laughs> oh yeah. Absolutely. Often our prayers are dry and lack passion. Okay, it's harsh. harsh. Yeah, it's, it is harsh, yeah. I think of that myself, you know, about the way I pray sometimes. Touching neither our, our heart nor the heart of God, let these prayers inspire you to pray to God from your heart. Wow. So intense prayers from the Bible, all right? So like in Philippians 1, you know, you have five days in our, in our lesson plan. Day one, there's nothing to write. They kind of do it for you to kind of give you an idea of what's, what's happening. So what I'm going to talk about a little bit on day one. Okay, day one is Psalms 139, 19 through 24. Go ahead and read it. Okay. But the first 18 verses of this psalm relate the wonders of God's love for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we get an awe-inspiring perspective of God, it is sometimes easy to get angry when we see injustice. Can you recount times when you got angry at others because they violated righteousness? I don't know. I might get angry at the word recount. <laughs> I mean, but seriously, you know, think of that question. There is such thing as righteous anger. There is. Can you recount times when you got angry at others because they violated righteousness? All right. In verse 23, David suddenly shifts perspective. Why did he do this? Right. These are questions that they're asking. Okay. Next bullet point. Sometimes in our righteous indignation or anger, anger. Yeah, we can become judgmental of the sins of others. Mm -hmm. Here, David has just asked God to slay the wicked. Pretty harsh. Yeah, but before he goes complete, goes completely of that, before he lets go completely of that, sorry. He thought suddenly, stop, he suddenly stops to realize he may too have wickedness in him. Mm. So where would that leave him? If he, if David's asking God to punish the sins of others or slay the wicked, mm. and he finds out he has wickedness in himself, what happens to David? <laughs> hmm? That's rough. Next point. It is easy to note the sins of others, right? But what about my own sin? Okay. Am I truly righteous, or are there areas in my life I need to clean up? Next point. David then prays a prayer, asking God to search his heart and root out the bad stuff in him. 
In fact, you'll see that a lot throughout Psalms, where he says, God, search me. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and this, and yeah, so we, as we do, I mean, if you want to read the whole book of Psalms, I mean, the 150 chapters, but. Oh, it's awesome. Um, yeah, you'll see all throughout there the, the prayer of many of these people who are writing these songs and these prayers. You can see the passion. You can see the sincerity of their prayers. And this is how we should be praying. So today, as, we, as we're coming to a close, we talked about praying without fear. So there's going to be a lot of things that want to oppress our communication with God. But we should learn to uh, just run through that. We should over, overthrow, overcome these fears. God wants us all to be prayer warriors. We should learn to stand for Him. So, and, and one quote that I always remember is, Nothing of eternal significance happens apart from prayer. So God hears our prayers. He keeps our prayers. So pray like your life depends on it, if I can say it like that. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, man. This, we, this is an awesome lesson. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, praying, and like I said, it's a key element of the Christian walk. God wants to hear from his children. So let us li uh, bring all these things. Let's petition these things to God. Let us make ourselves right with them. Let's repent of our sins. Because uh, when we do that, we're, we're focusing on God's will and what He wants to bring in us in our life. Yeah. So please join us again next time for session seven. We're going to dig a little bit deeper in praying. So, Tim, what about the, is there a couple of weeks coming up where there may not be any videos? Yes, yeah, so uh, with Thanksgiving coming up and also something our church is doing new this year is we're focusing intently into a missions week. So we're having a missions conference here. We're going to have uh, missionaries from all over the world, even here locally. Yeah. So we're going to focus all over time, uh, just welcoming them, them into our church and just doing life together with them yeah. and hearing what God is doing all around the world as we are to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth. So please, it may be a couple weeks, but uh, we will be back with you soon. Uh, just bear with us. Be, be patient. And in that time, pray more. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. We love you and we thank you for joining us this way. God bless you.